Mics are hot. Hot mic. And we are live with Tal'Dorei World in Chaos. Thank you so much for hanging out with us as we do some D&D. These are some of my favorite people to play with. And, uh, you know, what's really cool. Did anybody know? I think I do. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't. Please tell us, Brian. What's <laughs> really cool is that we are sponsored by SoNerdWear.com. It's what the nerds what? wear. It's what these nerds wear. Huh? Yeah. Go I get, was wrong. <laughs> go get all your awesome geek gear at SoNerdWear.com. Use the discount code SOULBEAR. Get yourself 10% off your order and look geek chic like, well, me and whoever else is wearing it today. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm wearing the Dumpstack Charisma one today. Yeah, she is. Those are my people. Which is, it's ironic for, for your character. <laughs> <'Cause> my... Yeah, <laughs> I had to really think about that. I was like, I have charisma, and then I was like, oh yeah, dump stat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, last time on Taldore World in Chaos, um, you guys spent some time shopping, like you do. You had some gold to spend and needed to pick up some gifts from a red tiefling. Uh, who told you that basically you guys were going to go risk your lives. The least he could do was give you some stuff. Um, and his name was Sergil. So you guys went to his tent by the sun tree and uh, gave you all some nifty gifts to help you along your travels. And then you purchased some more nifty things to help you along your travels. And yeah. uh, knowing that you were going to finally once and for all end Angelique in the Neverfields. So you guys began your trek to the docks, and it was about a, a was it, about a half day travel to get there. It was kind of far down a cliff, but eventually you made your way to the boat and set sail. All was well and good for a while, but as the uh, humid air hit the freezing ocean, a mist began to form, and something began a knock knocking at the bottom of the boat. You were accosted by three large shark-like creatures, excuse me, who began slamming into the boat, knocking various people into the water. Sindar was already in the water as he had transformed into an orca whale to help pull the ship. Um, and you guys managed to do enough damage to them that they decided the meal wasn't worth it and went to go find easier prey. With that, you guys were standing around the boat preparing to finish your journey to the Neverfields, which is still about a little more than a day away at this point. And that is where we pick up soaking wet uh, Sylvia, Victoria, uh, and Sindar all soaking wet from being in the water, and Kalisha as well. Uh, <laughs> the, the humid air is beginning to turn colder as you guys are drifting <clears throat> with no sails down because Sindar was pulling the boat. Hmm. Um, I'm going to go take a long rest. <laughs> and then you can hear her feet squish as she walks to the cabin. Cinder kind of just like passes out on the dock of the boat, exhausted. Okay, so Cinder just kind of curls up by one of the masts of the boat. Uh, Kalashaw will see everyone 
being tired and worn out and will uh, start getting ready to set sail again by himself. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Garren will help him. All right. Siegfried would love to help, but he doesn't feel uh, confident enough in his abilities to actually do anything like that. Yeah, you, you see Siegfried, he like reaches for a rope, thinks better of it, and then his hand slowly drops to his side. Um, as Kalashan Garen, you guys uh, drop the sail and allow the wind that is still blowing, not quite as hard as you would like it to, but blowing enough to set you guys back in motion. Uh, it takes you a good 15 minutes to get everything set, but once you do, um, the, the boat seems to be moving fine. There doesn't seem to be any uh, major structural damage. Uh, Sylvia, when you go below deck, you you don't see any leaks or anything like that. Uh, so it's it's a solid boat, as promised. Uh. All right, let's. I guess I got this. Go go rest. I'm fine. Take make sure everyone else is okay though. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's not like every time I captain a boat, something bad happens. <laughs> every time we do anything, something bad happens. Yeah, I get it. I understand that it's not exactly my fault. No, it's not your fault. Okay. Are yeah. they close enough for me to hear? <laughs> um, I'll say go ahead and roll a perception check. Oh, uh, that's a lot. Um, yeah, twenty-four. Uh, yeah, you you can hear everything they're saying. Technically, it was the shark's fault. Yes, technically it was. But what's really bothering you? None of that went well. No. No, it didn't. And I'm not fully convinced that everyone realizes the fact that it didn't go well. We're about to go try and kill a chaos dragon to save the world. And three fucking sharks almost killed us all. There is a lack of cohesion with this new makeup of the group. Um, it would be, obviously, it would be nice to spend some time training with these people and getting on the same page. Of course, no matter how much <clears throat> we even tried to prepare chaos always takes over so I we always we always seem to find a way though and I hate to think or even feel like that's good enough or okay but it's what we have. And we just need to... Uh, we, we, we have no other choice. We have to stop her. <clears throat> I know. And we don't have a lot of time. I've lived my entire life with my back against the wall. I understand the pressure. I understand that we're literally getting by on scraps they were barely making it through each day <clears throat> I get it it's just hard because I don't think <clears throat> that everyone else does the two new people aside sure All right I, they don't know what they're doing they don't know what they're in for they don't understand. No, not yet. <sighs> I'm 
I, uh, I don't know. I think, I don't think you're giving everyone enough credit, though. I, uh, we've all been dealt a shit hand. I think. <sighs> I am very. No, I'm not. I, mean, I must say this, though. I am. <clears throat> maybe. Maybe it was wrong. To, uh, to, to, to. To put the armor on or something like that. But she did it for all the right reasons. Her intentions are always good. And damn, the stuff that she's good at, she's fucking good at. I think she knows her limitations. But we have them. We have the limitations. We all have them. I, uh, I don't know how to make you feel better. I'm not good at that. It'd be a good start if people didn't fall overboard the first time that we saw something attack us. <sighs> yeah. Who didn't fall in the water? Um, us? It was you, me, and Siegfried. Yeah. Everyone else found their way into the water. <clears throat> well, yeah, but the druid was already there. Fair. And you knew that Tori was going to fall in the water. I mean, come on. So it's my job to make sure that everybody is secured beforehand? I can't be a fucking parent. I have to I... get the ship from point A to point B as fast as possible. I can't hold somebody's hand if it's their first time on a fucking ship. People go in the water and they die in the water. That's what happens. Okay. Uh, while these guys are having their conversation, I assume that no one has yet to put on like the extra layers of clothing that we brought with us. Uh, nobody said they've gone to the trunk yet to see what's actually in there. I'm gonna go to the trunk. I'm looking for the heavier clothing. I okay. went to the food, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, so you you find something that looks like it would fit you. Uh, I, it's not for me. I want to get grab the stuff for everyone. I want okay. to start, ha start handing out thicker clothes for people to put on. Um... Is the trunk where I'm at? Uh, no, the trunk trunk was on deck. Okay, never mind. Then I wouldn't see this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I'm going to start handing out the uh, the thicker clothing. Uh, so, Gara and Kalisha, as you guys are having your conversation, you see Siegfried uh, walk over to the trunk that's on deck. It's kind of actually behind uh, you, Siegfried, where you're at, kind of at the front of the ship. It's right there, like, in the back. Uh-huh. And... Um, he opens it up and starts grabbing warm clothing, and he walks over to you, uh, Garen and Kalisha, and hands you each some clothing that looks like it would fit, uh, and then kind of makes his way over to Sindar, and then grabs the last of it and heads below deck to Sylvia and Victoria. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry. Being underwater has messed with my voice a little bit. <clears throat> you are quite welcome. Welcome. <laughs> You're funny. That's nice armor. It is seen better days, I assume. Is that cat hair? <sighs> yes, I do imagine it will be with me for some time. <laughs> you hear a little mitt's voice in your head. Always with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I still have <laughs> some in my mouth. <laughs> it's like constantly stuck in the back of your throat. <laughs> well, it's like that one hair that you just can't seem to swallow. I need water. 
the ground. <laughs> Perhaps something that I may drink. Oh, okay. I drew a craft some water. Do you just, oh, like cool. do it in your hands or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I guess Siegfried holds out his hands. Like, <laughs> I hope you do not intend for me to drink from your hands. It's clean. <sighs> Fine, and I'll drink. <laughs> okay. Um, make, make a Constitution saving throw. Like in D and D. Uh, nineteen. So you you drink some of the water, and like as you're drinking it, you're kind of like gurgle a little bit, and like. <sighs> <laughs> and the the ha stray hair is freed, and you swallow it. Ugh. Oh my god! Ah, uh, the last of the misfits. <laughs> I don't think that's the last of it. No, no. <laughs> but the last of them, the last bit that's in your throat. And yeah, the last in my. Oh God, phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> the misfits were in your throat. Oh I, uh, man. Oh god. Fucking D and D. Yeah. And with that, uh well, if there's nothing else that Siegfried can really do or I mean what time of day I know it's like misty and kinda overcast. Can we tell what time of day it is? Um, the sun is just going down over the water. So it was kinda like dusk when the battle had begun and the sun was rapidly falling. By this time, it's just setting. Okay. Is it winter or summer? That's a good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, it, remember, it, if you recall, and I say would say, Garin, you definitely recall, the seasons are all screwed up right now because of uh, the chaotic elements. So... It's supposed to be at this point, like kind of spring. Okay, all right. But it certainly doesn't to, feel like it. Okay, just trying to gauge the <clears throat> um, tilt, sun. Ah, yeah. Time-wise, yep. darker when you know, kind of thing. Right. By month, it's it should be like just turning to spring. Okay, so basically, um, yeah, there's. Oh boy, I am so tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, was there anything uh, anybody need to do before you guys call it a night? Uh, I don't think so. Nope. Kind of worn out my use just by being on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kalashaw Garan? No, I'll, uh... I'll keep captaining the ship. Okay. Um, are you going to take a long rest at any point, or are you going through the night? I'm gonna go through the night. Okay. Um, Garen, are you retiring? Yeah. Okay. Um... Uh, how much space is there on this boat? Like, is there a lot of room down there? It doesn't seem like it. It's about a 50 to 60 foot uh, long boat. So it's not super big. Uh, it's about 10 feet high. So it's, yeah, it's kind of a tight squeeze down there. <clears throat> but currently there's only... Uh, Sylvia, Victoria, I would imagine Siegfried, you went down there to take your long rest? Yeah. And that's it, that's down there. And then some barrels of food and water. Okay. Um... <clears throat> um... Ten... Okay. Like, in the center there, between the two masts and everything, mm -hmm. um, how is that space being used? Uh, there is nothing in between the two masts. Um, I was thinking about putting a hut there. Yeah, you'd have enough space. Um, 
just to be above deck and in case something happens i'm like already up here kind yeah. of thing i can see out stuff like that and it just make me feel better if i could keep an eye on Kalshaw. yeah you most definitely can do that okay i'll do that okay so as you all for better or worse drift off to sleep it's it's a little bit difficult sylvia i imagine you're not sleeping you're just resting just sitting there <laughs> just sitting there thinking about all the chunks that were taken out of you by the shark yeah gross um Kalisha, you push on through the night, um, and as dawn breaks, Kalisha, you do take one point of exhaustion, right. um, which just gives you disadvantage on ability checks for now. <clears throat> yep. Um, and or does it? No, it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I don't know if I'm following the logic. Uh, maybe someone has a spell that can... Well, someone does. I mean, that's up to them. But as long as he has the one point of exhaustion, he has disadvantage. Yep. Um, but as the as the sun starts peeking over the east, um, you start to see a troubling sight, Kalisha. Um, you don't quite see shore or anything, but you start to see uh, large, looming icebergs in the water. Motherfucker. <sighs> Oh, fuck. Um, oh. Siegfried. Yes. Uh, have everybody tie up. How do you mean tie up? Like secure themselves to boat? The boat, yeah. There's cool. icebergs up ahead. It's We're going to have to... I'm going to have to do some maneuvers to get through it. It's going to be... It's very gonna be experience. Very well. Uh, <clears throat> I need I'll to help. find the rope. <laughs> I'll help. Let's... Uh, yeah, come on. Grab and rope and... Or, well, searching for rope. Yeah, I mean, there's rope all over the, the deck okay. of the ship. <laughs> uh, so... How many icebergs are we talking up ahead? Are we talking, like, a few big ones, or are we talking, like, uh, an oh-fuck moment amount of icebergs? Oh-fuck moment. It's like a field of icebergs. And you okay. can tell, like, to maneuver through this, there's going to be points where it's a super tight squeeze. It's going to take some real, like, pinpoint maneuvering to not strike any of them. Uh, 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 uh. Sindar! Yeah. Uh, he's frozen. Oh. <laughs> Hitting. Hitting. Oh, there he goes. There we go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's impeccable. Great Dragon timing. Sickle. Yeah. Uh, I'm sh I'm sure Sindar will be back. Question mark. Hope so. Yeah. Yeah. After looking at it, I don't think I can. Fix exhaustion. Uh, you can with greater restoration, but that costs like a lot. Uh, it's not too much. I've got. Okay. I've got a lot. Okay. I have no spells that can help navigate this. I imagine he would be making ability checks, which is. Yeah, all. he will be. <laughs> He'll need. Yeah. The DM. If there's well, a time to use it. To be fair, that, that was Robert's decision. <sighs> yeah, I, I kind of already had the ice field figured just based on the location, so it was not me. <clears throat> I promise. Um, okay, so while we're waiting for Sindar, was there any other direction you want to give Kalisha as you edge ever closer to this field <clears throat> of icebergs? Well, it, had, uh, well, I guess would I know... <clears throat> well, shit, with that would would Siegfried be able to piece together like, oh, he might not be mentally uh, sharp enough to navigate this. I mean, you can I'll say this. Make a perception check. Sure. Uh, perception... Oh, yeah. Ooh, 11. <laughs> okay, with an 11's enough, uh, you can see Kalisha, um, he looks stressed 
Uh, he's got bags under his eyes. His eyes, the eyes themselves are bloodshot. And every so often you can see his head kind of nodding unconsciously. I guess I'll walk over to him. Will you be able to navigate this in this condition? Don't have a choice. Um, Conrad, you should get on the, the bird's nest thing. No. And would I, out. would Siegfried know if Greater Restoration would fix this? I would say, yeah, you would know just okay. because you know the spell well enough to know okay. that it would. And there goes my diamond dust. As I pull out some diamond dust and I cast Greater Restoration on Kalashaw. Okay, Kalisha, as Siegfried uh, touches your shoulder, you feel rejuvenated. You don't feel nearly as exhausted as you were, and your mind kind of sharpens, and you gain better focus. Oh. Okay. All right. So, uh, we need Sindar in the water directly underneath the ship. Somebody tell him when he gets around. Okay, uh, uh, before that happens, though, um, let me cast a spell... And uh, at least for the next hour, we will be telepathically linked. Perfect. Whoa. That will, that will help uh, greatly. <laughs> Who is we? Everyone. If, oh. But does that mean that you guys can like hear all of my thoughts? You can <laughs> just communicate. That's it. It's not. We're not reading each other's minds, but you can communicate through your mind. Um, if, well, you know... Yeah, we might be able to hear some weird shit, but that's okay. Um, I don't know if I want to be linked. <laughs> Sylvia, mm -hmm. we all need to be on the same page right now. We are going to be in a very treacherous situation, okay? Okay. I... All right. You got this. Sylvia so has uh, never felt an anxiety like this before. <laughs> and I cast it takes one action, so. Okay. Uh, I really don't want anybody up on the crow's nest because we're going to be hitting some pretty harsh angles, which means the boat's going to do this a lot and then that. Okay? Everybody following along? Yeah. And when you're up top and that happens, you can fall out pretty easily. Yeah. And it's I don't like want that. Shot. Are we already telepathically linked? Yep. Sylvia so immediately goes, I'm not stupid. Why is he talking to us like we're stupid? <laughs> I'm assuming, right. like, not intentionally projecting that. It's just no, you're thinking it's not that. Intentional. And because you don't know how it works, it's just. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, you all hear that. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, is there. Um... And then you hear it. Did everybody hear that? Did everybody hear that? Just look. Yes, look yes, we, we heard that. Ah, shit. Uh, is there any, um, like, extra wooden planks? below deck um i'd say you can go and yeah roll an investigation investigation oh uh well that was a natural 19 so 23 uh yeah with the 23 when you were below deck for the night uh you do remember there wasn't much uh but there was about five planks used to repair the hull in case of breach okay well uh there are some planks down Low deck. I will stay here, and uh, if we do hit something, I will hope to close up hole. Okay, so Sindar underneath the boat. Everybody else is going to be tied to the boat, so they can't fall out. Okay? Everybody so the same? Understand? Is Siegfried going down into the boat, though? Yes. 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 Okay. Alright, then... There's also another thing that we might need to do it's pretty unorthodox, but I know that it works. Yes. If we need to make a pinpoint pivoting maneuver, we will need to drop the anchor very, very quickly. And where's the anchor? Should be below deck. <laughs> okay. I, I was, yeah, I just wanted to know. Okay. Uh, whenever you say... Um, is that something that's going to need a certain skill, like fast hands or a fast mind? It's going to require some strength, because anchors aren't exactly light. Uh, 
then, yeah, somebody else. <laughs> well, I guess I'm just as good as Siegfried, right? Yeah. yeah. I was kind of thinking that maybe you guys could do it together, but uh... we can do that. Yes. If Sindor will be under boat, then yes. Yeah. Okay. I just should be at the front because I could just fire an unlimited amount of blasts at icebergs. Okay. I want to clarify something. I cannot be hindered in any way when we start going <laughs> through this. That means if if something happens which I cannot anticipate, i.e. Uh, uh, an iceberg exploding and changing where it is at the given point, we will crash and we will all die. <laughs> So, so that's fine. But if I don't know what's going to happen to the iceberg when you shoot at it, there's potentially a big problem. Oh, I guess. Why don't we say that nobody does anything until Kalashot tells us to? I guess, yeah. Is that fair? Yes. Sure. Cal Except you, for a fixing hole, because he will not be able to see if the uh, hole I is mean, damaged. Um, no, but oh, he can, we can tell him like in an instant with our minds. You know, so it's, yeah. We're, we are linked, mm -hmm. and we need to communicate everything that we see. Yep. The helm is not exactly the most advantageous point on the ship as far as vision is concerned. Okay. So we should probably have um, Victoria and Sylvia tie themselves up, but near the front of the ship so they can, you have more eyes? Agreed. Okay. Does that work, Sylvia? I guess so. Thank you. Okay. I think we're ready to get in a position. Yeah. All right, let's go. Okay. So, as you as you approach, everyone takes their positions. Uh, Sindar goes under the boat, back in his orca form. Um, we'll just say because I have no idea where Sai is, and why he's <laughs> not back yet. Um. And as you begin to enter the frigid waters, you see, um, in the water itself, like the water itself seems seems to be freezing. And, like, chunks of ice are floating about the ship, uh, which makes it a little bit difficult to see where the icebergs end and the frigid water begins in places. Um, but, Kalasha, go ahead and roll a survival check and add that uh, extra proficiency because of your background. Natural 20. For <laughs> All right. 34. All right, so... At the beginning of, of this journey, uh, you are just de uh, deftly maneuvering about. You see uh, just <clears throat> where the icebergs are and manage to uh, be narrowly avoiding them. Um, there is a couple times where it looks a little bit close, but you're able to uh, re-maneuver the ship in such a way that you get out of the path. However, the, the field of ice is getting thicker. Uh, the ice in the water itself and the actual icebergs um, that are in the way. So go ahead and roll a second survival check for me. Um, Tori, seeing this, is going to give Kalasha inspiration, bardic inspiration. Okay. That's um, a D10 for her, right? Yeah, D10. It's just going to kind of be like, you can do it. I don't, we're going to make it. I don't think we're going to die. I don't really know her personality. <laughs> well That's fine. Yeah. Super bubbly. It's it's overly I can't positive. Do overly I'll try, positive. I'll try, Dana. Uh, 35. We're all not gonna die. 35. Okay. Uh, so with the 35, you... You... <clears throat> sorry. I have shit stuck in my throat, apparently. Got a mitz bits in my throat. There you <laughs> go. But as, as the ship keeps going, you're actually starting to cleave through some, like, actual iced water, uh, which... It's while it slows the ship a little bit and makes it a little more a little bit more difficult to maneuver, 
you actually keep a really good eye on where the icebergs are and some of the larger chunks of ice that aren't quite like tethered um you're able to expertly navigate between them as they shift and move through the water um go ahead and roll a third survival check for me if you could uh 27 okay uh, so with a 27 you you see uh to almost to the other side of the ice field at this point um you're you're getting through it um the water is is almost like slush now and this is like seems to be the thickest part um however the the treacherous water is not quite away from you yet and you still see some areas to maneuver around uh, before the water breaks. So go ahead and roll another survival check for me, please. Uh, 28. Okay. Uh, with a 28, you you're, uh, you kind of maneuver to the left a little bit, trying to avoid one iceberg, and almost overshoot it. And an iceberg actually scrapes along the side of the hull, but does no damage to it. It's a close call, and you can feel the vibration of the deck underneath you as you rub against it. Uh, but you I managed see, to pull I, free. I see no hole, no no damage nope. to the inside. Uh, nope. I, I relay that. Okay. Oh, thank God. Okay. Okay. You got this, Kalashot. You got this. And one yeah, more yeah, yeah. survival check. Uh, 24? Okay. So with a 24, you see the water ahead and you manage to take your first deep breath. And just as you exhale, you hear oh. something. It's, it was almost imperceptible as it was mostly in the water, but a stone jutting out from one of the icebergs does kind of tear into the hole a little bit. You make it through. The hole does take a little bit of damage. It's a very, very small leak. However, you are now through the ice field and back into open water. We're through the ice. How's how's the boat? Small leak. Small okay. leak. Yep. I should have prepared mending. Honestly, I could have fixed and fixed this. Uh, uh, it's no yeah. cantrip. You can't prepare it. It's okay. Gather yeah, nobody don't. Yeah. Does anybody else have mending? I don't. Fuck. Shoot. It's okay. There are uh, planks below yeah. deck that we can use. Okay. And when I say it's a small leak, I mean it's barely a dribble. Okay. Um, Kalashaw was he, he was close enough to the DC that it didn't do any serious damage. It's it's just a, a seeping more than anything else. Oh, okay. 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 Good news. We got through that. Yeah. That was good. Very good. You did exceptionally well. We made it. Excellent. You okay? Uh... Yeah, I mean that was uh, that was a hairy situation, and that kind of took a, a lot out of me. Yeah. How much longer do we have on this boat? Uh, how much longer do we have on the boat, DM? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's about a day. So you, about dawn tomorrow, you figure you'll probably make it. Early tomorrow. Okay. Oh, uh, Brian, how actually, many... sorry, sorry. I would say because you did sail through the night, uh, it would actually be this night that you'll you'll make it. Huh. Uh, um, probably tonight, actually. Oh, thank goodness, Brian. How many push-ups would I have to do every day to get stronger? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know off the top of my head. I will say a fuck ton, and it would take months. Okay. So how much is a fuck ton for one day? Uh, go ahead and roll an athletics check. Okay. 
15. 15? Okay, so you, you start doing push-ups uh, on the deck, and whew, your arms get a little sore. Uh, oh. You get you get a little stitch in your tummy tum, but uh, you manage to do a good uh, 20 push-ups before you're just like, <sighs> I am out of shape. Okay. So 20 for day one. I'm keeping track, Brian. Okay. I don't want to be... I want to be buff. I decided. <laughs> okay, I will tell you when you get there. Okay. Two years of this campaign later. <laughs> <laughs> Your strength is now an 11. <laughs> Are there any, like, protein bars on this boat? <laughs> uh, there is hard tacked, there is smoked fish, and there is salted meat. We might have ate a lot of that protein already, yeah. Y'all Ren is never lacking on protein. I guess I'll <laughs> eat the the fish and the meat. Okay. Um, it's it's all very salty, but it's, it's very not bad. salty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Can't take you folks anywhere. Oh god. No, you cannot. <laughs> and then I guess I will continue to write in my book. Okay. Until we get to the other side. Other side? I mean, end of our journey. <laughs> <laughs> she just other writes in her book what? until she dies. <laughs> until I get to the other side. <laughs> uh, I'm on chapter seven. Okay, go ahead and roll. Roll a Constitution check. Mm, good oh man! So you're on a boat. <laughs> um, eleven. It's difficult uh, with the between the rocking of the boat and the uh, the stitch in your side from the push-ups. You you feel a little bit sick as you're writing. Uh, you're starting to feel a little bit seasick. <clears throat> you managed to kind of hold it down, but there's a uh -huh. couple points where you're just like, mm. Okay. <clears throat> writing that down. <clears throat> yeah, so you don't get very far into the next chapter at all. Okay. And then, uh, while other people are doing their thing, can you real quick go check on Sai and see if he's going to be able to come back? Because I'm waiting to fix the layout. To yes. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think he said he had to, like, uh, set up his old computer. Ah. Uh, I can't see any of that. Yeah. Uh, he's setting up his old, old laptop. Hopefully it works. That okay. was a couple minutes ago. Alrighty, in the meantime, uh, Siegfried, Kalisha, Garen. Yes. Is there anything you guys are doing now that you're clear of the ice field and have a little bit of time? Um, hmm. I have to really think about this one. Has it been seven days yet? Tomorrow will be the seventh day. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, in that case, yeah, I, I'm making sure that everyone is warm and fed. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the acronym was that I learned in the army. It was the acronym was like cold, and I know the LD was like layers and dry. I can't remember what CO was. Oh well. Cover. You just go around asking everybody if they're cold. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's cold. Yeah. Uh, clean, overheating uh, layers and dry. Okay, he's trying to mess with the top, but it's like really slow and not getting very far. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so Siegfried uh, kind of goes around handing out some jerky and making sure that everybody has their clothes, their warm clothes, uh, layered properly and that it's being effective. Um, while he's doing that, Gara and Kalashaz, is there anything you guys are doing? 
Are you trying to be mom now? I would like everyone to be at peak performance when we go against Chaos Dragon. Is that okay? Yes. Thank yes, you. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. To be at peak performance. Oh, my I God. Need... I am the mother. Shit. Hey, hey, I need you to steer the ship for a little bit. If you want oh. me at peak performance, I need some time. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, you're better at it than, you know, you. Perhaps I uh, just just do not have confidence. Uh, I'm sure it cannot be that difficult. I mean, if you don't think you can do it, I can just I can stay up here. I I more read about sailing, not necessarily did it. So you know absolutely nothing then. Ah, this is not like a a read to learn type of thing. This is a a do to learn. Um, Brian, with all the time that I've spent on the sh like on ships, would I have learned anything? It's actually funny because I do. <laughs> I am proficient in navigators' tools too. Um, I'd say go ahead and make an intelligence check for me, Garren, or do it. Do a history check rather. History. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, that's a twenty-seven. Uh, yeah, you've picked up a thing or two. Um, would it give me any any help if I was to steer the ship, even though I'm not proficient in survival, or have a modifier in wisdom? It it wouldn't give you any help, but there's also no detriment. Okay. So you're familiar enough with a ship that you can do a, a, a clean roll on it, whereas if you've never steered a ship before, you would take disadvantage on your rolls. So okay. That, that's the benefit. I'll do it. That's fine. I can take care of it. Oh, no, no, no. Um, if uh, if it's not Siegfried or, or one of the others, then there's, there's no point. Oh. <laughs> to to be at peak performance, we would have to go below Dick. I mean, I mean Deck. <laughs> um, right. I um. Oh. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. I um. Uh, I'm not good at picking up on signals. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I will go and. I believe in you, Siegfried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so Siegfried, you're taking the helm? Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty easy. You just do this. <laughs> Start doing exactly as he don't, don't do that. <laughs> the, the boat begins listing back and forth. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not all at once. Just to, oh, oh. to counteract. You hold it steady. Oh. That's oh. why I'm getting sick. <laughs> Yeah, Sylvia, you're you're still below deck trying to write, and all of a sudden your like head slams into the side. <laughs> She's concussed. <laughs> what the heck is happening up there? <laughs> Two minutes later, Kalajan and Garen come down the stairs, just fucking making out. <laughs> Whoa! No! No! Can you be upstairs? Jeez! I was here first. <laughs> You've been down here all the time. I was sleeping. You're always... You don't sleep. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Sylvia will pack up her book and go back up the thing, up to the deck. As the cold breeze hits your face, you actually do feel a lot better and a oh. lot less sick. Okay, good. This guys are awful. You just hear Sylvia mumbling to herself as she leaves the house. So, Leah, could you please come over here? Oh, yeah, I guess. What do you, what do you, what do you want? Uh, uh, help. With what? I have never steered boat before. Oh, I, it's easy. I'll start steering the boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and uh, make a survival check for me. We're fucking good at that. All right. <laughs> Guidance. <laughs> Can I also make a performance check to see if I can convince him that it's gr like I'm doing great? Well, let's see what the roll is first, and okay. then then we'll see. So that's a three. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll performance. 
<laughs> that why this dice this is going to dice jail. Um, that's a seven. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, Sylvia grabs the wheel of the boat and immediately just cranks it as far left as it'll go. Okay, okay, okay. And the, the, boat, the boat lists a bit. Garen, Kalasha, you guys down below deck just, like, roll across the deck and right, hit the I, wall before the, the boat rights itself. And Sylvia looks at Seafree and is like, no, 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 that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> and yeah, I no, reach no, over and I take, I take it back. Like, it, it's okay, I... I think I just keep your. You, you should have it down now. <laughs> yes. I, thank you for showing me. I appreciate this. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. Try and try and. Sylvia's <laughs> just gonna nonchalantly walk away as if she did something. I'll try and correct uh, the turn that we just made. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll a survival check for me. Uh, do I do it at disadvantage? No, it's it's only a, a straight roll. Okay, because cool. you've also Survive. been on boats enough. Uh, that's a twelve. Okay, with a twelve, yeah, you're you're able to get the boat uh, <clears> righted and back in the right direction. It's a little, it's a, a little rocky as you do it, but it's not terrible. And you, as, as soon as you get back on course, you're just like, Phew. okay. Yeah, I'd say with your okay. proficiency with the navigator's tools, that <laughs> that would negate a disadvantage. Well, I get, I get that from the archaeology. <laughs> Yeah, but navigation's navigation. What you're yeah. trying to do is navigate at the moment, yeah. so. Okay, so the boat continues back on course. <laughs> oh, look, it's a sigh! Hey! Yay! I'm back-ish. Okay. Hey, we, we went through a, a field of ice. I'm proud of you guys. You did great. Thanks. Sylvia almost sunk the ship afterwards, though. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, as the day wears on, uh, not a whole lot happens. Uh, Kalashan and Garen are below deck for quite a while, I would imagine. Uh, but as midday approaches... <laughs> See, no, they mean need some water. <laughs> I mean, there's... there's the barrels of water are down there. So. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. then, we then they... We need water, but we can't go get it. Yeah. As long as they have access to plenty of water. Oh, you, you guys need water? I get think... Oh, yeah! Will you do me a huge <laughs> favor and go down and get me a thing of water? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I go downstairs and get a huge thing of water. Yeah, yeah, right there. That's perfect. What? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine like Sindar got all like walked all the way past them without even noticing before like like and getting the ladle to put the water in like a small jug and then heard that and then noticed what happened or what's going on. I think you're muted, Sai. Uh, he's not. It might be on his headset. Yeah. Okay. His mouth was moving, but nothing was happening. Yeah. No, I'm not muted. Oh. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, it's my throat. Underwater, remember? Mm-hmm. Uh, whoa. Oh, shit. Sorry, <laughs> I, I'll knock next time. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, you don't have to stand here and watch. You can keep moving. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sindar comes back up with the jug of water. Ah, uh, thanks so much. I, I hate all of you. <laughs> you Why do you hate me? Make a minor illusion to last longer. Sindar <laughs> <laughs> just drew and crafts what he saw out of fucking plants. No, no, he doesn't. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I just... Never again. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so it's it's about midday at this point. Uh, and Siegfried, go ahead and make another survival check for me, if you could. Mm hmm 24. 24, okay. Uh, with a 24, you're starting to get a better, uh, grip on things and how the boat is supposed to maneuver. And, uh, you're, you're feeling fairly confident, uh, in your ability. Excellent, um, excellent. I, I think I'm getting this. 
is anybody keeping watch at all? No, Sylvia's um Siegfried is very concentrated on not fucking capsizing this boat. Um Sylvia but he is, is feeling... not fucking oh, observant at the moment. Go oh, ahead. No. Sorry. Uh Sylvia is feeling Sindar's biceps and admiring how strong he is and is asking how to get that strong. No. How do you get this strong? Gotta do a lot of terrible things. What kind of what kind of terrible things? Trust me, don't ask. But I, I like need to know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear? Could you hear him? A little bit. Oh, okay, he was out of control. Um, <clears throat> I just I need to know. You have to tell me because I want to be strong. Come on, please, please tell me. You're just so strong. I try Sin to persuade. S Sindar <laughs> wants to m make a perception check to see if Sylvia would even be able to get this strong. Okay, go ahead and roll perception. Um, that's a 25. I mean, it's, anything's possible. Give up, kid. There's no hope for you. <laughs> hey, please. And I'm going to put on, like, real sad eyes. And can I roll for persuasion? That will be up to Sindar. <laughs> it's an automatic fail. I use my legendary action. You don't have a legendary action. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so basically what you're telling me right now is you don't want to be friends we can be friends yes, not work no, out no, partners no 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 because that's not how friends work you can't just keep secrets do you have a lot of friends yes like how many do you count the ones that have died no i have one you're doing Two. great. Two. <laughs> Sylvia's gonna mope away. <laughs> Dejected, you see Sylvia's uh, shoulders droop and her head tilted forward as she shuffles away, kind of like kicking at rocks that aren't there. Sindar, <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you doing anything to pass the time on the boat? Mm. Just no. I would if we're in open waters again. I would like to assist the boat in moving. We okay. could try that again. Yeah. If, do you guys think I would uh, give it another go? No. What a waste of time. Sylvia says from the <laughs> other side of the boat. By all means, please. All right. So, is the lasso still intact, or did the shark attack mess it up? The lasso is intact, uh, but the sails are still dropped, so you'd have to hoist the sails. Okay. Kalisha, you want to give me a hand, or you're busy? Down, the fuck? Downstairs. Kalisha's got his hands full. My hand oh. is full. Great. Oh, hey! Shit, very, very full. Well, does, <laughs> any <laughs> does anyone remember how to drive the boat? I, I told you it was a stupid idea. I am currently steering. So you're steering the boat. Um, yes. Sails up. I don't think it is magic spell. Kalashaw was telling me about his last boat. I just figured. Oh, yes. I forgot about that. <clears throat> it the was a nice boat. boat didn't do that either, though. It was a nice ship. Wait, Sylvia, you can float like in air. Maybe. Grab the bottom of the sail and float up. Why would I do that? So we can get the show on the road. Why? I think it's stupid. It's never going to happen. Not in a million years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how it works. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> Will you just hurry up? <laughs> I'm not doing it. Not you. Oh, Kalisha, are, you just, would... are you, like, yelling through the deck? Yeah. <laughs> uh, We're not even done with his turn yet. <laughs> Why do you keep asking them these things? Kalisha, can things. you just direct us on which, which ropes to grab? Uh, well, there's this rope down here. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvia, what are you doing? Don't light that fire on the deck. 
I'm not lighting any fire. Sylvia, He's no, lying. stop. He's lying. I didn't break the rules. <laughs> we know she better. Knows better. <laughs> <laughs> Does she though? Yeah, I'm gonna say yeah. She she does. <laughs> gotcha. <clears throat> Victoria, what are you doing? Stop helping Sylvia light fires on the deck. <laughs> That's a lie. I don't. I, I wouldn't do that. Says Tori. <laughs> Sorry, Dana. Vox uh, Machina well, had their demons, tool. and they were doors. Your guys' demons, sails. Sails. <laughs> yeah. Or coitus, whichever way you look at it. <laughs> coitus. Uh, I will say, uh, Sylvia, go ahead and roll... Roll a wisdom check. Alright, awesome. Let's see what I have in wisdom. <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing. <laughs> Eight. Eight? Okay. You're, you're getting the foggiest of ideas for the next chapter of your book. Based on okay. what uh, you saw Kalashaw and Garan doing. <laughs> oh no! The, the, the next chapter is on the the last fight with the stone. Mm, okay, then for That's a future chapter. At. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen after that. All right. So, are you guys attempting to hoist the sails, or? Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll okay. Garan and I are definitely hoisting the sails. Yep. <laughs> uh, Sindar and Siegfried, go ahead and roll survival checks for me. Yeah. What if it's a okay. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Plus 9 to survival. Cinder? Um. Oh. Cinder is uh, a natural one. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> okay. So, Siegfried, you're busy hoisting one of the sails. And uh, you see Cinder tug a rope. Uh, Sindar, go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw for me. Okay, this is tilted. There we go. A three. <laughs> uh, as she tugs the rope, the sail comes completely off off the mast and just drops on top of him like a net. And you just see Sindar just like trying to push through it, and you hear <laughs> rope. Um. Oh, I know that sound anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I will just, I'll leave God Red and I'll start uh, heading up upstairs. Uh, Please say you put pants on first. Completely naked. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Cal uh, just strolls up completely naked. You see uh, Siegfried uh, hoisting one of the sails. And you see what you would assume based on the size underneath the sail to be Sindar trapped underneath one of the sails, which is com completely off the mast. Okay, please tell me just what to do then. All right, uh, I'll put the sail back up, and then we can take it down properly. Okay. And then we can leave. Okay. All right, Kalsha. Why are you doing? Why are you doing that with your hand? So I do not see your unmentionables. All right, it's just a mask. It's nothing to be. <laughs> Yeah, there are now three masts above deck. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay, Cal, so go ahead and roll a survival check. Uh, 32. Okay. Uh, so with a 32, you're able to get the sail off Sindar easily enough and start reattaching the sail to every rope that needs to be attached to and begin to hoist it up. Sindar, you just see a naked Kalashaw just yank the sail off you, and Wait. he's just right in front of you. I'm in a minor illusion, sleight of hand, minor illusion, a leaf. <laughs> There's a small fig leaf, or rather a large fig large. leaf, uh, covering Kalashaw's unmentionables. <laughs> Where did you find a leaf? Don't answer that. Thank you. Uh, You're welcome. Thank I'd, you. I, I'd say within about 15 minutes, the sails are hoisted <clears throat> and ready for Sindar to jump back in the water. Okay. Um, let's try this again. I'm yes. going to pants on. 
Or leave them off for the activities you probably plan on continuing. Yeah, the moment's passed. Hmm. I wish I could say I was sorry. <laughs> but I've seen enough of Kalatshaw today. Um, in the water. Okay. So Man, somebody's got to tell him about the hut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Unless so, he likes the cold. Uh. Um, so with that, Sindar jumps back in the water and begins towing the boat again. And uh, I'd say after about four hours, you you make out land off in the distance. Uh, the water has become an icy slush. As an orca, you're able to withstand the cold without mm. issue. Uh, but you, you feel that, like... It, it's taking a lot extra to tug the boat than it did when you first left. Because you're, you're yeah. pushing through almost like Slushy an ocean water. of Slurpee. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to stop ocean. then and get back on the boat. Okay. Uh, but you guys do see land off the distance. You see... Um, it's, it's hard to make out, but it's just all white, covered in, in snow, and almost yeah. like a ring of mountains around this bay that you're approaching. Of icy mountains. Land ho. <clears throat> I think this is it. My jacket has fur on the hood, yeah? Sure, yeah. Okay, good. I put up my hood. My fur hood. Okay. Yes, uh... Garin and Kalasha, whenever you do decide to come up, please make sure that you are dry before uh, coming above deck. Why would we be wet? Sweat. Did you guys leave your handprint anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> On one of the port windows. There's a steamy handprint. You can't see it. You can see it from the outside of the boat, but it's there. <laughs> All right. We'll make sure to be dry. Thank you. And fully clothed. That is a good idea. Okay. So, now what? I believe we have a uh, vestige of some sort to find. Can't park the boat on the rocks, so I stopped here. I thought we were finding the the stone. Yes. No, that I is exactly what, what we are doing. I don't. <laughs> what other clues did we have for when we got there? Um, Does anybody know? Uh, hang on. Dana would know. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Lost my notes and I have no memory. I'll I'll be a nice DM and tell you that there were no real details other than this would be the place to search if there was going to be uh, an artifact that she would use to ascend, and that wherever she happens to be, there tends to be uh, unstable elemental rifts. Yeah, in the sky. I wrote. Uh... Neverfields and icy wastelands supposed to be where the gods battled and it created an artifact that was so powerful that the surrounding area had to be inhabitable, uninhabitable uh, to prevent anyone from getting it. Yep. All right. Shall we pack some food and venture forth? I suppose that is the only logical next step. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose we need to find a proper place to dock. Beach. We should not beach a ship this size. <laughs> Anchors away. Okay, that's not what we say. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have the hat. I have the hat. Are there dinghies? <laughs> Uh, there is one dinghy slung over the back of the ship that you could drop. And it looks like it could hold about eight, uh, medium-sized creatures, so... Okay. <clears throat> we should be fine. 
Yeesh. Probably okay. put Siegfried in first and lower him down. Read. Yes. Uh, and then I'll go last because I could swim if I really had to. Why don't we? Oh. I can also swim if needed. In the frozen ocean. I mean, it's briefly. really hard for me to drown, and I am resistant to cold. <laughs> Let's just all get in the boat. Yeah. Come on. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, has it been in another day? Has it not, been another day? Not yet. This is okay. nighttime before the, the final. Oh, okay. So, oh god, and it's nighttime. Fuck. Maybe we should wait till morning. <laughs> uh, I, no. I, I cast light. <laughs> Why not? I'm, okay. Is. Are we, wait, 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 it is nighttime. Should we just, like, rest here on a warm boat before we venture out into the freezing cold? What part of this boat makes you think that it is warm? Walls. Okay. Can't argue with that logic. It's solid. Like a wall. Better just to stay on the boat, yeah. It will protect from wind. Exactly. And what does wind do? Makes it cold. It er. Makes it cold. Er. Oh. So everyone below deck, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Put a hut up. All right, and the hut does <laughs> stay warm. So you you are protected from the effects of the cold while in the hut. Ah, excellent. What? Okay, I'm gonna start out half the night below deck and then get cold and go into the hut. <laughs> okay, you kind of worm your way in. Uh, with with Sindar's large frame, it's a little bit more difficult than it normally is, but you yeah, managed to squeeze in. This was tiny, and he curled up next to Siegfried all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess I'll like. Move in next to Sindar. Hey, Sindar, you're pretty jacked. That's what I was saying. Who took my stuff? <laughs> what, what stuff? What? Said nice. I got jacked. He no, you, you're very strong. Oh, sorry. You're, you're muscular. Yoked. Yeah. You're cut. I spend a lot of time in the wilderness. Is that part of your secret? Shit. Yes. I knew it. You wanna know you what else is secret? part you wanna know what else is part of my secret? What? Staying very quiet helps you get very jacked. I feel like that's can I insight this please? Uh Sindar, go ahead and roll deception or persuasion, whichever <laughs> it is, and Sylvia go ahead and roll insight. Sounds very true, Sylvia. I mean Nineteen. <laughs> You're gonna be so mad. What'd you get, Sindar? I got a twenty. Thirty-one. No. With the plus one to deception. Sindar <laughs> oh. is hard to read. That could be true. You don't know him well enough to distrust what he's saying. Hmm. Sylvia ponders in silence. <laughs> okay. So, like, what do you do in the woods? Study mostly. I love nature. Love to protect it. Love to fight things that try and harm it. In fact, all of these rifts are why I'm here right now. It's just throwing off the balance of everything. Hmm. That's fair. Wow, that's so noble. Training be to become an arc druid. What does that mean? Wow. You met Keyleth, correct? Hmm. I mean, we met a tree before that. <laughs> we met Treelith. What? No, we met Keyleth. We met Keyleth. Man, that's cold-blooded. She's just heightened. <sighs> oh, so that's what you need? That's what you're going for? Yes, who wouldn't want that? The ultra-powerful stationary route? <laughs> okay, that was kind of funny. <laughs> stationary, in a sense. Fair enough. Um, I mean, I, 
could think of worse things. Being dead? Yeah. So Sylvia's going... Being alone? And then, like, curl up on the... Right. Uh, Sindar's muscly bicep and just fall asleep. Hmm. <laughs> She's really taking to you. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I feel like it's more of, like, a pet thing. to get it a lot. Everyone's a, oh, everyone's new pet lizard. She might be into you, dude. Not a lizard. She likes dragons. So, she does. Since I'm sweeping, I'm gonna open what I have like glare. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, was there anything else you guys wanted to do before? We call it a night. Um, no. No? I'm going to try and slide a hand of my arm out of Sylvia. Damn it! I did 20 <laughs> push-ups. I got, can I get an advantage? No! Oh, what the? <laughs> hey, everybody knows you have to try the tuck and the roll. Okay, Cinder, <laughs> you go ahead and roll slide of hand. Sylvia, you roll tuck athletics. Roll. Athletics? Yeah. Can I cast guidance on myself stealthily or no? I'd say you're if you sleeping? cast if you cast guidance, you're going to let go because you need your hands. Damn it! Okay, okay. Athletics. Yep. I feel like my life depends on this. Oh! I got a seventeen. I got a twenty-three. Hey. Oh wait, that's acrobatics. You said athletics. Athletics. Oh. Yeah, plus zero. Nineteen. Okay, so beat it. Sindar, you like you're trying to tug your arm away, and Sylvia's grip just tightens, and you like begin moving her entire body, but she's not letting go. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, the Ashton. armor is like breathing. Yeah, it does kind of have its own. I'm not saying this, but like meta, it does kind of have its own energy. Uh, I, I was actually going to say, Sindar, since you are this close to the armor, for really the first time, go ahead and make an Arcana check. Because nobody's explained anything to you about the armor, so you don't really know the whole Jeez. deal with it. I think I might just uh, leave the stream because I'm rolling so fucking bad tonight. What the hell? It's not me. Yeah, I'm taking it all <laughs> from you. For once. Arcana? Oh, yeah. God. Nine. Nine? Um... It's an interesting set of armor, and it does have a particular energy. It's an energy that almost makes you feel a little uncomfortable, but you don't know why. Hmm. Okay, I guess I just fall asleep then. I have no choice. <laughs> okay. So as, as night goes and dawn rises... Uh, you guys prepare the dinghy and get it ready to <laughs> shut the fuck up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and you get ready to row to the shore. Can someone do divine intervention? Yes, someone can. Please, please, please. Ah, uh, 94. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think that's a little high. You'll have to try again tomorrow. Fuck. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe I will be the first one down. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Only Siegfried's going in the boat? <clears throat> well, no, you... Siegfried's going in the boat, and then we're crawling down into the boat. Oh, okay. Yes. We're going to lower Siegfried. him down. Okay. Yes, and I will <laughs> break the boat if he fell into the boat. From He's, a... <clears throat> He's just like a big anchor himself. I wish I could dispute these claims. I feel like he lifts me up. Uh. Lifts you up to take you back down. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't take. Or get me back down. up again. You see the wind beneath your He's wing. never gonna let me down. <laughs> uh, you guys are just pissing the night away. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Catchy. I mean. Okay, so you guys lower Siegfried in the dinghy and then climb in after him. Uh, Sindar, were you getting in the boat or were you 
gonna you burn a wild shape to swim to shore. I'll just get on the boat. Okay. So you guys get on the boat, and it it takes you a good about an hour of rowing through the slushy water. I sit next to Sindar. Um, I will say there are two sets of oars. Who would you have rowing? Kalisha. I can row. And Sindar. Okay. Uh, that's a good idea. So both of you go ahead and roll athletics for me. I'm going to cast guidance on Sindar while I'm like, just like real, like on his arm. And as he's rowing, you're just like going like this. <laughs> <laughs> can you please stop touching me? It's part of the spell. I know what you're doing. I know. I'm, I'm helping guide. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 22. Okay. She's really into you, man. <laughs> 22. And wait, what'd you get, Kalisha? Uh, 24. Okay. So, yeah, you guys managed to cut through the water. It takes you about an hour, but luckily, neither of you suffer any points of exhaustion from the effort. Um, and as the boat finally makes it to shore, you start to realize exactly how cold it is. Even with the uh, magically enhanced uh, clothing to keep you warm, it is still freezing. Um, I'm probably doing pretty okay, though. You're doing better, but it's still freezing. Okay. Um, to the point where you realize if you did not have that clothing, you probably would have frozen to death before even hitting shore. Holy shit. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sylvia's gonna check in her shield to see if her lips are like too blue. <laughs> uh, they're very blue. They're like bluer than normal. Mm, I decide I'm gonna use my hat to get rid of my crow's feet and all my wrinkles <laughs> to make myself look youthful again, and then just slightly unblue my lips. And then I'm going to plump the bottom one a little bit. Oh, no, I took it back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I'm going to tweak it a little bit and then put a little curl to my hair. Okay. Sylvia looks about 20 years younger. Hmm. That's so a lot. She still, looks, she still looks about 40, but... <laughs> Is that more your speed, Sindar? I forgot how old Sylvia looked. <laughs> Yeah, you, like, even though you're only so 20, like, you are acting kind of like a cradle robber. Oh, <laughs> I forget that she's old, like her. I honestly <laughs> forget, too. I don't. Uh, I'm playing Edna without even meaning to. <laughs> it's like, come over here, Sindar. <laughs> I just want to touch your muscly arms. Your so, yeah, so she basically gives after. herself a Botox with the disguised self. Okay, so, so yeah, Sylvia gives herself a, a facelift. Uh, takes about 20 years off her seeming age. Uh, but you guys are on shore, and it's honestly pretty peaceful. Um, the wind is whipping around you, and there appears to almost be like a horseshoe of mountain ranges around the bay area that you traversed and the only direction that you know is that the uncharted territory is all north of where you're at now okay okay so do we know which way is north i would say uh, you as a navigator yeah you would know and i begin stepping okay this way um as you guys crunch through the snow the snow is actually like coming up to your knees it is for rigid, cold, your feet are damp and frozen. Um, you guys travel for about the first hour, uh, managing to deal with the cold as much as possible. But I need you all to make uh, uh, constitution saving throws for me. Sylvia, your DC is different because of your resistance, but there's still a DC to it. Well, okay. that's a hell of a thing to fucking get a nat 20 on. I got a nat 22. Uh is my DC also different because of my resistance to cold? Uh, yeah, because of your, your new draconic armor. It is. Uh, 12. 12? Uh, I got a dirty 20. Dirty 20? 19. 19. Uh, will you please roll for Victoria as well? Sylvia? Oh, shit. I forgot. Oh. Please tell me she did better con. Okay. 8. 8. Okay. Um. Oh, wait. For a saving throw, though. Yeah, 8. Eight. <laughs> okay, and Kalisha, what was yours again? I'm sorry. Nineteen. Nineteen. 
Okay, um, so the freezing effects don't seem to be affecting any of you, except uh, you all look, or you, you hear, like, the chattering of teeth, and you see uh, Victoria just kind of vibrating with cold. Uh, she will take one point of exhaustion. Oof. Okay. From the cold. Um, and she, she's, she's hurting. It's, it's very, very, very cold. Uh, brother. Ooh. Um, um, um I will, oh, sorry? Oh, I was just saying, should we, should we stop for right now? Warm up? I don't think stopping's gonna help that. We have only been moving for an hour. Oh, <gasps> I have an idea. I'm going to polymorph Tori into a penguin. Oh no. Okay. And I'm gonna carry her with me well, let me in see my coat. real quick. <clears throat> oh no. This could be fine. <laughs> I just need to look at something about a penguin. Or I might have to go penguin and talk to Tori. Come back. Uh, okay, so they don't have a penguin. Uh, so I'm just gonna go with a different kind of bird. I guess. Chicken? Yeah, I, yeah. It's probably the it's equivalent. closest equivalent. I don't know. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll say... Yeah, I'd say probably a chicken would be the closest approximation. <laughs> oh no, not a chicken. Uh, okay. So... Because they can, they can endure freezing temperatures. I mean, yeah, so you, you transform her into a penguin, and it does help insulate her. Uh, I need you to go ahead and roll... Let's see, what's this one going to be? This better not backfire. I'll never get to pilot anybody ever again. It's, it's going to be an acrobatics check. For me? Yeah, and it's at disadvantage because you're, you're held up by the snow, and oh, yeah, Victoria's not... She immediately begins to try to waddle away. Uh, 18? 18, okay. So you dive into the snow and manage to wrap your arms around uh, Victoria. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Okay. Why? And I'm going to say, it's okay. I'm going to keep you warm. Uh, 15? Okay. Uh, you manage to clutch onto Victoria, and she's squirming and, like, kicking with her, her little, uh, her little ah. feet. Uh, but you do manage to, to keep tight. On Victoria. <laughs> and as it warms her up, will it help with her exhaustion, especially if she's not walking anymore? No. Damn it. But, because okay. uh, she's she's going to keep squirming the whole way. She's not... Penguins are not entirely intelligent. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> no birds are. I should have done, like, a polar bear. At, whoa. Yo, no. definitely not. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> Polar bears are super dangerous. I don't think you've ever seen one, so that's okay. <laughs> that's why I was trying to think of what I... I don't know. Okay. And polymorph is, a, a, what, an hour, I believe? It is... Or dismissed. Yeah. Concentration or up, to an, up to an hour. So I just have to concentrate on it. Yeah, so as long as you're concentrating up to an hour, if you break concentration, then... Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so go ahead, everybody make me perception checks. Okay. Uh, that'll get me an 18. 11? Okay. 18. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. And what were you, what were you Kalashaw? Uh, 17. 17. Okay, so Siegfried, Sylvia, and Sindar. Um, as you guys look through the whipping winds and the flurry of snow and ice far off in the distance you see what appear to be blinking lights up in the sky they're very faint and they seem to be there and then not almost like almost like christmas lights basically are those rifts opening up and closing do they look like it? <laughs> it's hard to say with the rolls you guys got. Uh, it's a miracle you noticed them at all. <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> well, hmm. 
it is something. We should definitely head that way. That is unfortunately what I was thinking. Let's do it. All right. We okay. Okay. Start yeah. heading in that direction. As you continue to trudge through and march through the thick, freezing sleet and snow, heading towards what look to be the unstable elemental rifts uh, that you know to be a marker of where Angelique would be. There are four days until the end of the world, as you know it. Um, it's hard to tell how far out that that area might be, just because of all the the wind and the snow. Your visibility uh, is only about 20 feet ahead of you. Uh, the, the only reason you could see that through the snowstorm that's building is just how bright they must be shining through. Um, which is also why it was hard to get a beat on whether or not it was an actual elemental rift or something else. But, as you guys are traveling... Uh, let's see, how does this work? Um, yeah, as you guys are traveling, um, I'm going to say go ahead... Who's in the front? We've got... Siegfried it's and Kalishaw. Kalishaw, yeah. Go ahead and make me perception checks at disadvantage. Oh, great. Oh, yeah, I'm technically holding a penguin. <laughs> well, unfortunately, one was an at 20, but the other one was an at 19, making it a 28. Uh -huh. I got a 24. Uh -huh. 24? Hey, okay. Um, it... It's almost imperceptible, almost, but about just 20 feet ahead of you, there appears to be a disturbance in the path of the snow, and as you look a little bit closer, you kind of halt the group, and you notice that whatever it is also seems to have some kind of silver armor that glows, mm -hmm. though it doesn't have feet, and carries a flail and there are two of them they haven't seemed to notice you yet um and they have their backs to you at the moment shh, shh, shh. guys Dude. guys there's two things up ahead i activate my eldritch sight um nah nothing nothing picks up uh, I will say the flails pick up. Uh, they glow. The flails um, glow. No. You guys, their weapons are magical. Uh, hang on. Uh, I'm gonna release the polymorph on Tori. Okay. Uh, can I use eyes of the grave to determine whether or not these things are undead? Uh, you can, and they are not. Okay, well, I have used one. It is not undead. I'm going to pull up the battle map for people to see. Yeah, battle map, battle map, battle map. So how big are these things? Uh, They're about your size. Uh, okay. Medium-sized creatures. You said with no feet. <laughs> Correct, they seem to be hovering. They, they, they appear to be floating. Yep. <clears throat> Silver armor and flails. Yeah. Other than that, it's hard to make out any kind of distinctive things. It almost looks like fl a floating set of armor and a flail. And I'm going to put them on the map. I don't Do have minis for this, but I'm going to use these guys. Do we attack? Um, can I send a minor illusion out to see if they react to it? Surprise attack. You just don't know what's going on, and it's really okay. Okay, you guys hide in the snow, and I'll go check it out. And if they do attack, then you all get a surprise round. Go ahead. Uh, 
I guess. <laughs> okay, so Sylvia's gonna kind of walk forward, and they're everybody hid, right? I didn't yeah. say hired. Well, yeah, I mean, sneak attack. Okay, where do we hide? In the <laughs> snow. It's like there's like four feet of snow. Okay. <laughs> I guess cr- just crouch down yeah. to hide. Okay, sure. You guys are all crouching down into the snow? Yep. Sure. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, go ahead and roll stealth. Okay. That would be... And, like, I'm not I'm not really stealthing, to be honest. I got nice. a seven anyways. Okay. <laughs> so how close are you trying to get? I'm just trying to, like, walk past, like, casually, like I don't see them. Okay, so you get to about here. Okay. And they both turn and move. I, and... I act like I was surprised that they were there. Oh, excuse me, I didn't see you there. And you hear... Um, what languages do you speak? Um, I speak primordial and common, but I do have the spell tongues. Do you wish to cast the spell tongues? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and all of a sudden the... Uh, shifts into... What are you doing here in this inhospitable land? Um, if I could be completely honest, I'm trying to save the world. From what? So, there's this lady, I wouldn't even call her a lady, but have you heard of Angelique? What is an Angelique? She's a chaos dragon. And we believe that she's here to collect a stone to destroy the world. She is after the Tablet of the Ancients. I think so. And what would you do with this tablet if you were to get there first? Um, to be honest, I don't really know what it does, but all I really want is for all my, everybody to be safe and not have to worry about the world ending and to protect my friends. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Mm. I am. Oh, my dice suck. Plus nine, 13. Dice jail. If they had eyes, this would be a little bit easier for you, but you can't really read what their what their thoughts or emotions might be. In mm-hmm. fact, they almost seem to be emotionless. Um, as you're you're as close to them as, as you are, you do notice that their bodies seem to be made up of nothing but air. And there's a steel helmet that that is almost chrome in how shiny it is, with glowing blue um, like area where eyes would be. That seems to be emanating from the helmet itself. How many are with you? Do not lie. Not um, again. There's me, Gaben, Kalsha, Siegfried, Tori, and Sindar. So six of us. And then seven, including me. And they turn to the huddled shapes in the snow. <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys, I say in common, I was like, you guys stand up. I think they're nice. I pop out of the snow. Uh yeah, I, I do not want to be in the snow anymore because right. it's fucking cold. Yeah. Um, and like the snow is now caked on your your warm clothing. And that might be an issue later. Possibly. Might not. Be. Of um, Kalisha, you you withstood it pretty well though, due to your armor. Um. And they motion for you all to step forward. I guess we step so, forward, or I I'm do, Siegfried I, does. Yeah. I I do so as well. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> And I'm only moving pieces around just in case this all goes bad. Okay. So they move kind of ahead of you. Go like 
that. Put the two squishies in the back. And they kind of look you over. You're all far from home. Uh, what are you? they speaking? Uh, they're speaking Orin. <laughs> it's an elemental language. Yep. No. Um, he's, he, he's saying that we're really far away from home. Uh, and we will be just a f- hopefully returning home after stopping the end of the world. And then I translate for Siegfried. Okay. Are you here? Do you mean harm to the denizens of the Neverfields? Oh, no. And I translate that for everyone else. Okay. We'll just assume from here on out you're translating. Okay. Uh, uh, We do not know anything of these people. We are here for a simple objective. There is one person who plans on taking the artifact from these lands. We mean to stop her. They turn their heads to each other. And they don't they don't make a sound. But they look again to your group who really look like kind of ragtag and and out of place. Not wrong. The way past here is treacherous and dangerous. You are after a chaos dragon of that we know nothing. However, not every creature out here will take the time to talk things out. We understand. Is there something you can give us that may save us from fighting? Something that shows that we are welcome to complete our task? No, there is nothing. We serve as the sentries. We will allow you to pass, but we cannot guarantee your safety. In fact, I'm surprised you made it this far. Usually, the cold alone does most travelers in clearly. You're better equipped than you look. That said, what lies beyond will ensure your death. It is best to turn around now and save yourselves. If we turn around now, there will be no world in a few days. That's what they thought when the cataclysm hit. And yet, you are all here. We're here. Well, thank you for allowing us to pass through. If you do run into this lady named Angelique, will you tell her that Sylvia says hello and it's best she just turn back now? Wait. We've... We've seen the destruction this woman has brought to this world. We live through it. We have to stop it. Feel free to try. But it will be up to you. I want to get out of here, too. (laughs) We are eternal. There's no fire nor any brimstone that can scare us. This is no normal dragon. She will take your elements and change you into something else. We live through gods. We lived through the Cataclysm, we lived through the Divergence. We survive. That's good. That's good. But, uh... The rest of the world isn't so lucky. And we're here to risk our lives, to try to save them. Then which pass. direction the stone is. The stone. Yes. If we, we find don't... it, we find her. I 
I will give you one piece of advice. Well, maybe two. Okay. The first. The stone lay at the amber ruins. It is yonder north. As you approach, you will notice remaining chunks of amber when the cataclysm happened. They were strewn about through the destructive force of the gods. Follow that trail, and you will find the tablet. You are all mortal, are you not? For now. Yeah. Yes. Never tried it out. And then the second piece of advice. Don't touch the tablet. Okay. It contains the essence of the battle between the gods. The essence of the cataclysm itself. If you were to touch it, it would destroy you mind, body, and soul. That said, if you did survive, you could potentially become a god yourself. If you survived, in any event, the tablet itself will be destroyed. Is that so? Yes. Huh. Hmm. It is the last remaining remnant of the war between the gods. Well, that's plan B, huh? Okay. Okay, so we may pass? You may. You show temperance. You show bravery, you show heart. Perhaps this place will not end up your grave. But if it does, it was good to meet you all. Thank you for your help. We appreciate it greatly. Be wary. For the knights here, there's no protection from the knights here. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. <laughs> Bye. <clears throat> gonna just kind of walk around them. <laughs> Actually, they, they kind of part to let you guys through, and oh. they don't part so much as they, like, drift away. Um, I wonder they... what they talk about all day. Um, Probably the weather. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Bri Brian, were they, what they were speaking was primordial, one of the dialects? Uh, according to Gabe, it's a dialect of Primordial, so I'll go ahead and say we can retcon it that you didn't use a spell slot. Cause that was Yay. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. On the road again. What was that thing that we came up with fucking in my garage? Plot spells? Yeah. <laughs> well, fair is fair, if that's the case, you know. It happens. <clears throat> anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, we keep, uh, I guess me and Kalisha keep guiding us north uh, until we reach uh, Amber Ruins. Okay. Um, or at least uh, maybe until fucking nightfall. Okay. So. Whichever comes first. So after about four more hours of travel. Oof. Um, I need you all to make constitution saving throws again. No! <sighs> okay. Dirty 20. Dirty 20? Uh, <sighs> I rolled the same thing for me and Tori. 15. Okay. 17. 17? 13. 13. 21. Okay. Um... You, you all are starting to get more used to the cold. Uh, however, Siegfried, after taking that dip into the snow, <clears> some <throat> of the ice kind of landed right on the neck area of your armor, and the heat from your neck started melting it, and it seeped into your armor, just wetting your back. 
and making the making the cold that much worse. So you'll take one point of exhaustion as you continue uh, to travel. Uh, let's see, conditions, exhaustion, one. And then um, Siegfried and Kalashaw, go ahead and both roll me a perception check. Siegfried, yours is at disadvantage because of the exhaustion. Perception, I am good at. Never mind. 26. <laughs> 12. Okay. But well, the 26, uh, Kalashaw, as you're walking, you feel your boot step on something that feels smooth underneath the snow. Um, almost like a, like, a, like a stone, but it doesn't have like the rough texture of stone under your boot. It seems more polished almost. I'm going to keep my foot down, and I'm going to bend over, and I'm going to kind of brush snow out of the way to try and get a glimpse of what I'm standing on. Okay. As you part the snow and you kind of sweep it away, uh, you look kind of into the hole that you made, and you see uh, what appears to be glowing piece of amber. Sylvia, look at this. What? And I go over there. Whoa, it's glowing. What do you think it is? Mm, I activate my Eldritch Sight. It is almost blinding with Ooh. magic. Like, it, it's literally, as soon as you activate your Eldritch Sight, it's almost like a flash, like a flashbang went off in your face. What are oh, you looking at? Ow! That is so magical. I've never seen anything like it in my life. It There's, literally just blinded me. What do I know anything here? about this stuff, Brian? Uh, go ahead and roll history. Um, or religion, whichever is better, I would say. Does this mean we've made it to the amber place? And Siegfried, I would say you can roll the same thing. It's still a disadvantage, but um, just due to your archaeological background. It's uh, 12. 12? That's what I got. Um, you said history or religion. Yep. They are the same at disadvantage 14. Okay. Um, you guys have both never seen or heard of anything like this. Alren, what do you make of this? I am too tired to understand. <clears throat> um. Uh, what am I seeing, Brian? You're seeing a very smooth chunk of of what appears to be amber, and it's radiating. Uh, it's a not, it's not a bright glow, but a, a very dull glow. Okay. Um, I'm gonna cast Mage Hand and start sweeping away more snow. Okay, uh, and as it as it uncovers, uh, it is very clearly a chunk of amber. Uh, it appears to be about softball sized. Uh, it's not perfectly round like a softball, but it's it's about that that size, and it's radiating all the way around it a, a dull glow. <clears throat> and Sylvia, with your eldritch sight, um, you did <clears throat> notice that it is a divine magic. <gasps> is it connected to? Can I see if it's connected to anything? You can keep digging if you want. I'm gonna keep digging. Well, as you keep they, digging, uh, they, they, it comes they loose. Follow the ember trail to the table. I hold it in my hands. Wait. Hold wow. On. Um, Can I Arcana check it? It's actually slightly warm to the touch. Okay. As you oh, hold it in your hands. it's so warm, and she puts it to her cheek. Sylvia. Oh, Ren, can you identify it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. I'm going to hold on to it, though, because it's kind of precious and warm. Um, I'll cast Identify. <laughs> can, if are it you... is warm, can you please put it down the back of my armor? Are you Maybe using a spell slot for it or a I don't know. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> Sylvia. Well, Sylvia's yeah. going all golem on it. While I'm doing that, Sylvia, can you look around? You You said it blinded you. Maybe oh, yeah. uh, looking around with the Eldritch Sight, can you see anything else like that might form a trail? Okay, I'm going to cover it up real quick and then activate my Eldritch Sight and look around. Okay, and what, and that's what, 60 foot range? I think so. Okay. 30 feet. 30 feet? 30 feet. 30. From where you're standing, you do not see any kind of glow. Okay. Mm, nope, nada. All right, we'll, we'll need to look around, but let me... Uh, finish this uh, spell and it's going to take 11 minutes though so maybe and look so around. Don't worry, we're going to know just who you are in just a second. 
I suppose while he's doing that, everyone perhaps uh, spread out and move away snow. Perhaps there is more amber. Maybe. Not within 30 feet there isn't. Well, we can go a little further. Not that you can see. Not that I can see. Okay, so you guys are continuing to search? Yeah. Okay, so search whoever's searching, go ahead and roll investigation. Uh, not this advantage. 18. 18. 12. 12. Okay, so, uh, Kalisha, as you are moving around, you're kind of, uh, like, scooting your feet through the <clears> snow. <throat> and about 15 feet north, you feel a familiar smooth shape under your boots. I will s- clear a spot of snow out, and I will uh, pick it up as a similar object. It is a similar object, and as soon as you lift it up, Sylvia's Eldritch Sight goes nuts again. Ah, my eyes! Don't point it directly at my eyes! <laughs> what is wrong with you? <clears throat> so many things. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, magic can't be seen through the snow. Um, so this is going to make it a lot harder <laughs> to find the trail. <laughs> um, but, I don't know, maybe if I... Learn more about it. Finding them, maybe I can keep looking. Yeah. Okay, we should all move to where Ka- was Kalshaw more north, the one that he found. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it was a little bit north. Uh, it was more northeast. Okay, so I say we all move to where Kalshaw is now, and then we circle around to <sighs> find another one, and then move in that direction. <clears throat> So as you guys are doing that, Garen, your spell uh, finishes up, and I need you to make a wisdom saving throw for me. Awesome. Okay. Ah, nat 20! Okay. Yes! Uh, With a nat 20, as you attune yourself to this item, a searing pain roars through your head as you see flashes of battle. You see this holy divine light clashing with the most utter voided darkness you've ever seen in your life. You see chains whipping around. You see glowing golden blood fly. You see black, uh, blood like tar or tar like blood spatter on the ground. And this immense power that's in your head and this immense vision, uh, causes a nosebleed and your ears begin to bleed. But you manage to tamp it down and force it out of your head. Um, However, you notice something. You almost feel a frequency to this magic. And you feel the tug of this frequency where Kalisha is standing as well. Oh. What? Garen, are you okay? You're bleeding. Yes. I'm going to head towards the tug. And the closer you get to it, it's almost like it's almost like an anxiety. The further away from it that you are, the more anxious you feel, and the closer you get to it, the more comfortable you feel. And as you approach it, you start to feel that, that anxiety tugging at you again, this time a little bit n- uh, like five feet northwest. Okay, this way. I'll go to it. Okay. I'm following right behind Garin, then. And as you get to that spot, uh, you feel a smooth stone under your foot, and you feel that tugging again, and it almost is, it's like heart-wrenching. Like your heart is, like your heart is breaking, and tears are streaming down your cheeks as you feel another tug, this time 15 feet northeast. Uh, Okay, this way. And... It goes on like this for about another mile of just constant ebbing and flowing of this anxiety and this broken heart and this pain and relief over and over and over again. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. No. 
Uh, 17. Okay, with a 17, you manage to withstand the exhaustion as it's taking every ounce of your strength to keep this together. It is difficult, but it is also getting dark. <sighs> oh boy. The sun is beginning to go beyond one of the mountain ranges to the west. But you still feel that tugging. You still feel that anxiety like you have to get to the next stone. You have to know where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Govan, it's getting dark. I know. I can't stop. Um, I am going to uh, take a uh, my flame tongue dagger. Uh, I'm going to cast light at the end of it. Okay. Um, and then I am going to uh, grab Garen, uh, kind of sling one of his arms over mine, and kind of help him uh, uh, move. Okay. <sighs> um, so, you guys continue moving, um, and it starts to... The sun, the sun actually sets about another half mile uh, mm-hmm. of travel, and Garen, the feeling is... The, it feels like the closer you get to the amber ruins the more intense the feeling is getting and your heart is like fluttering and you're getting like palpitations it's just it's beating so hard in your chest it's getting difficult to breathe we have to move i have to keep moving Uh, i'm gonna no my god we gotta keep moving going okay you guys keep going yes yeah okay um about another half mile in and the feeling is starting to abate as the sun dips and the night forms uh you notice sylvia the are you still holding the glowing rock yeah one of them okay so you notice that the glow itself seems to be waning as if the night overtaking it is dampening its magical energy. And for the first time in two miles, Garen, you feel like you can breathe again. Oh, <gasps> Garen, I think its <sighs> magic comes from the sun. We should stop and rest. Oh. Okay. Can you give us the hut? I don't know. I need a minute. I need a few minutes. Uh, gosh, he doesn't seem physically harmed, right? He doesn't seem physically harmed, uh, and he doesn't seem exhausted. He just seems almost like his magical essence is being drained. Like, he just feels like... It, it's it's a, just a feeling that can't really be described. It's nothing like Garen has ever felt in his entire life. <sighs> yes, this does not seem like something I uh, can really assist with. I... No, this is... Oh, this is beyond help. Garen, can you make me one more constitution saving throw, please? <sighs> you can do it. Natural 19. That's a 23. Okay, you needed a 20. Uh, you collapse to your knees, Garen, and roll to your back, but you maintain consciousness. Uh, you're, you almost like feel yourself moving in and out. You see globules of light dancing in front of your eyes, uh, but you manage to hold on and roll over and just barely pull yourself back to your feet. (sighs) Will you be okay? (sighs) Fuck if I know. Well, we should definitely rest and try to warm up. Okay. Start a. F- you guys are starting start to look as blue fire? as I am naturally. You, uh, <laughs> all of you that can make magic fire, some, just make some magic fire. Uh, sacred flame. Like little <laughs> fire or big fire? Just something to warm us up a bit and. 
produce flame. Just, yeah. Let me... Uh... Sacred flame does not do that. No. Sacred flame doesn't make fire. <laughs> the snow makes a dexterity saving throw and fails. Uh, uh, Sindar, you said you produce flame? Yeah. Okay, so you hold a flame out in your hand, and you kind of go in between the whole group and just kind of hold it there. Uh, it's not much, but it, it provides a, a small amount of warmth in this frigid, bitter cold. Okay, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna try. Oh, do I know? Okay, Garen, uh, to do this ritual cast, yeah, you will need to roll a wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, I just Tori... got to make sure you can fight through it to, yeah. to do it. Uh, Tori is going to be like, I believe in you, Garen. You can do it and give him inspiration. Okay. I'll use it. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting she has inspiration. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, all together, that's a 26. Okay, you needed a 20. Um. You see Garen concentrate, and he again drops to his knees, and his shoulders slump, and his head goes down, and he's muttering and chanting under his breath. You see his hands moving, uh, not quite as elegantly as they they typically would be. You can see almost like the the cold itself is affecting his joints, and Mm. whatever's going on with him internally is affecting his mind. But after, what is it, 11 minutes casting on that? (sighs) Yeah. After 11 minutes, the hut forms, and I'm assuming you make it the color of the snow? Yes. Yeah. So the hut forms, and it's the same color as the, the frozen tundra around you. Oh, uh, I just collapse the fuck out. Okay. <laughs> Garan passes out inside the hut. All How's right. the floor in the hut? Is it just the ground? It is, it is uh, just the ground. However, the hut itself provides uh, not like heat, like a fire. It's just a comfortable temperature. It's a comfortable temperature. Gotcha. Uh, I sit in the hut. Okay. Yep. Uh, Kalisha will sit down next to Garen, uh and try and comfort him the best that he can. Okay. Yeah, and as you as you hold Garen, you feel that his skin is like ice, not just from the cold, but somehow like even colder than your own skin. Um, he, even though he's cold, he's sweating, and you can feel the condensation all over his body as you hold him, and you can feel that his breaths come uh, just shallowly, and and with labor. Siegfried, looks like you're up. I don't know if there's anything that can fix this for him. I, I think, think this is yeah, his this... burden. Is it? Is it like my armor, where it yells things at you? Covered. <laughs> I assume he's passed out at this point. That is yeah. what it appears. I oh, don't believe yeah. he will be speaking with us, but it is clearly taken quite a toll on him. Not physically, but definitely mentally. Yeah, well, I guess we should probably rest up as much as we can, because we have to be close to the temple by now. Um, anybody that wants can make a perception check uh, in the direction of the lights. I'm doing it. Sure. Yes, that was so good. 20, uh, not natural. 30, 20. Let's see. Disadvantage, 13. <laughs> okay. Um, Sylvia, you notice that the lights in the sky are brighter. And they're flashing with more intensity. It seems like they're moving quicker in and out of existence. Uh, it's still hard to tell exactly what they are, but it does seem bigger and brighter. Hmm. Interesting. And that's all I can do about it, so... 
-hmm. there anything anybody else wanted to do before you call it a uh, rest? Try and grind down some diamond into dust. <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead and roll Arcana for me. Is it? It's still at disadvantage, huh? Yeah. Fudge. Two net 19s for a total of 19. <laughs> uh, yeah, how many, how many, how many, uh, or how much gold worth of diamonds were you trying to powder down uh, right now? Well, I'm trying to get at, so I've got two diamonds right in, or two diamonds right now. One I'm going to leave alone, but the diamond that I want to grind up is worth 200. But if I could just get half of it down. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're able to kind of, uh, to break the diamond into into chunks and you're able to grind out about half of it before cool. you will risk uh taking another level of exhaustion from not yeah. sleeping yep so that's if you, if you wanted, wanted to grind the other half you could but you'd have to stay up yeah no i'm good cool because now i got a hundred in diamond dust okay which is good for one spell uh sindar kalisha was there anything you guys were going to do um, no. And I actually might change around my spells in the morning. Sindar? Uh, no, that was it. Okay. So, as you guys hunker down for the night, Sylvia keeping watch, I'm assuming, because she doesn't have to sleep? Mm-hmm. Okay. Garen, as you, as soon as you hit the ground, you open your eyes and you find yourself in a battlefield. And as you look around, it almost seems to be this same spot, somehow. But it's not cold. There's no snow. There's a forest. Off in the distance, far off in the distance, you see a looming temple. And it all appears to be made of the amber material that you guys picked up and have been following. And it is hundreds and hundreds of feet high. It looks like it could touch the stars if it wanted to. And it radi radiates a holy light. As you're admiring this, this temple of amber, you see a flash in front of you as a woman with a large axe and plated silver and gold armor is striking down with an axe the size of you. And as you look at what she's striking at, you see a five-headed dragon snapping at her from all directions. She swirls around and cuts into the neck of one of the heads as another head turns around and bites her in the side, yanking her off her feet and flinging her up. As she's flying through the sky, you see a mass of darkness and chains and the chains whip out and strike her across the face and smash her right in the back. You hear an audible crack of her spine as it hits her and she slams down into the ground, her axe scattering, skittering away from her hand. She begins to pull herself up and the dragon, five-headed dragon, looms over her. She manages to reach out. The axe flies towards her hand. She swings it up cutting just from the the, the uh, sternum up through one of the necks and you see the flesh splay open and, and tar-like black blood spew onto the ground. They don't seem to take any notice of you. You're just seeing this happen. You see a woman and she flies down and her, her wings appear to be like uh, raven-like. She wears a porcelain mask but you can tell it's the form of a woman. And as she strikes down, she looks up and she reaches her hand out and a black energy flows out and strikes the middle of that void. You see some of the chains rust and crumble. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session as you fade out of this vision, seeing the amber ruins in their former glory in this battle of the gods before waking for the next leg of your journey as your ultimate fates draw ever closer in Tal'Dorei, World in Chaos. Dun, dun, dun. Yay! Oh. I miss when you said uh, Tal'Dorei, a new dawn. 
It was well, so nice. <laughs> maybe if you survive this fight, it will be an actual new dawn. Fair. Again! <laughs> but for now, you're on the precipice of chaos. So, yay. Thank you so much, everybody, who hung out with us. As normal, we will do a quick 10 to 15 minute Q&A for anybody that has some questions about the session, about the characters, about what have you. Now's the time. Yeah. Uh, I need to do some research. Uh, Would the spell Dawn uh, cause any warmth? Uh, I have not seen that spell before. Let me take a look. Uh, It, It casts down sunlight. Uh, I mean, there's sunlight already, so... Uh, the say... light the light of dawn shines down on a location you specify within range. 30-foot uh, radius, 40-foot high cylinder of bright light glimmers there. The light is sunlight. But it's like... Yeah, it's just it's... light, though. It's it's not actual but sunlight. It's, if it's specifically <laughs> saying it's sunlight, though, it would radiate heat. Yeah, that's like... why I said dawn instead of daylight. Because daylight is just light. In theory, Mm -hmm. it would, but the damage that it does is radiant damage, so it's more like a holy light. And the light itself is like sunlight in the intensity and the brightness, but wouldn't necessarily cause warmth. Because it technically isn't coming from a fire of the sun. No, exactly. It's literally, it's a beam of light. Um, Gabe asks, what made me want to have the stone in the Neverfields? Um, the location. Uh, it's remote. It's destitute. Uh, it seems like the kind of place a battle would have broken out. And it seems like the kind of place that would be uninhabitable except for the most savage and horrifying of creatures. Which made it a perfect place for a stone tablet. Nice. Uh, Gave asked Derek, are you looking forward to Siegfried fighting Ace Rack similar to Game of Thrones Clegane Bowl? <laughs> Is that what it's turning into? <laughs> the fucking Clegane Bowl? <clears throat> God, it, uh, hopefully our fight goes better than that one. Um, is he looking forward to it? Uh, he's not necessarily looking forward to the f- fight, but he's definitely hoping that when he does get to that fight he's prepared and he can successfully <sighs> destroy as Aserac. but who knows who indeed yeah Sieg Bowl. Uh, <laughs> Gabe asks is Garan interested in retrieving that unknown wand vestige in single one um does Garan know anything about the wand mm-mm yeah, just that I don't it know. exists and it's a wand. Mm. Um, he's got a really weird relationship with elves, so um, kind of because his master was an elf. Um, there might be some interest. But uh, without knowing anything about it, um, he just knows it's a wand, you know? Um, I I don't know. Yeah. All right. That's fair enough. Uh, Gabe asks, after Angelique, is Kalisha going to get a ship and go hunt down the Kraken that killed his old crew like Moby Dick? Absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Kalisha uh, will hopefully have a life to live outside of being a sea businessman when this is over. So he will let the people that died due to horrible things uh, be at peace and not try and chase memories. Okay. Uh, Gabe asks, how does Sylvia feel being a 20-year-old stuck in a 60-year-old lady body? (laughs) Not great. And I... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and she didn't realize that it was even a problem until Sindar joined the group. So she's trying to <laughs> on and it's, she's realizing it's affecting her charisma, hence using the disguise hat to give herself Botox. 
<laughs> to look younger. If only it would fix your arthritis. Oh, yeah, it's only... Man, the cold must be a bitch right now. Oh God, yeah. It's oh, not great. don't even. My act, my in real life knees will start aching. Don't even talk about it. <laughs> uh, Gabe asks, "Is Sindar from Draconia, the land where the dragon born with tails enslaved ones without tails in the past?" No, he's not. He is from a surprise, but not Draconia. He's from a surprise. <laughs> he was a surprise, or <laughs> maybe I don't know. Yeah, most kids are. <laughs> uh, Gabe asks if all if you all ever had a battle royale game for fun, off or on stream with your Taldori characters, who would you bet to win it? So I'll just go around and start with Sylvia. Who do you think would win a battle royale between? We'll just <clears> say the five of you because Dana's not here to defend herself. Uh, can I bet on Sylvia? You can. I bet on Sylvia. Shocking. Because dumb, just one dumb luck strategy and like, I'm like so beefy. I'm so beefy. I'm borderline tanky right now. We'll put that to the test. Maybe even next vampiric week. Vampiric touch. Mirror, like vampiric touch. Like I just can't die. Patty. <laughs> um... <laughs> I I would bet on myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I just, um, yeah. Well, no, I would. No, I would have if I still had some things that I used to have, like those robes. Oh my god, those are so good. Um, actually, I would probably say um. Out of the five of us, um, what kind of druid is uh, is Sindar? The most powerful one. Circle of the moon. <laughs> oh well, here you're only a little. I go Kalisha. Okay. Really? He's the most creative in battle. That's a word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna chuck my dagger at a dragon and go flying off. That's that is creative. I'll give him that. Uh, Sindar, sigh. Um, you know, before I probably would have picked Garin, but Sindar's pretty fucking badass. We're all voting for ourselves. <laughs> no, uh, Maddie voted for Kalisha. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, Derek. Uh, Kalisha. He hits hard and he can heal himself a little bit. Yeah, that's the other yeah. thing, too. Plus, if you remember, I like, a couple big mean, battles, <clears throat> he's one of the only ones to survive. Like, so, you know, proven record. But I mean, Earth Elemental. Alright, what about Wait, you, Robert? who survived what? Uh, so, part of me wants to say Kalisha. But if there's one thing I've learned playing D and D, it's the the Circle of the Moon Druid cannot be beaten in the Battle Royal. It is 100 percent Sindar, and it's not close. If it was, <laughs> and it's not close. It's not. It's not close. You just have unlimited hit points. Like pretty much, yeah. Yeah, like it's even two yeah. levels below Sylvia. You would win in a one-on-one -on -one fight with her. Like, bitch, no. Let's set this up. Let's do it. Set it up. Let's do it. Like, I because up. I don't like this kind of talking. Um, <laughs> Sylvia, no. Like, death almost killed you, where the rest of us, like, just took death out like that. Yeah, but you, but I literally have Didn't get dumb involved. luck. I have dumb luck. That's uh, why I always win. I mean, your, your rolls tonight would say otherwise. Barely made you survive that battle. So. That's why it's dumb luck, not great luck. But I have dumb luck. And when it counts, I always fucking survive. By literally the skin of my fucking teeth. See, that's what I'm saying. It's like, By the hair of my chinny nice. chin chin, I make it through. And that's why I would win every battle royale ever. Uh, because of luck? That's your argument? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because Garin would kill you first. 
no. But Cat- by the hair of my chinny chin chin, I'd make it through. I think the fact that it's a battle royal uh, changes the question quite a bit. If it was like one-on-one tournament style, I think Kalisha has a much better chance of winning. This is true. Yeah. I, I think Sylvia could beat Kalisha <clears throat> and Siegfried, but maybe not Garen or Sildar. I can outmove you. And I have sneak attack damage on every attack. But I'll just polymorph you. That's not a <laughs> bad choice. If you, if I if I don't make the save, but and that that one doesn't even cost a spell slot. So if that doesn't work, then I can Sypnatic static. And that doesn't cost a spell slot. Or or mental prison. That doesn't cost me a spell slot either. We've thought about this too much. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gabe's got another question, Brian. Yeah, so we'll make this the last question. Uh, he asks, not sure if you all have the Top Dolores setting book or any of the new subclasses in there, uh, <clears throat> or do any of the new subclasses in there interest you all to try out? My backup character currently is a, uh, is a dwarf uh, rune sorcerer. So, I yeah. have not seen any of the subclasses, so I don't know. I haven't seen any of them either. I think I'm the hoarder of the lore. Yeah. You are. I'm a Is there hoarder. A new book that I don't have? No, it's, it's just, just a, the. Oh, okay. Just the regular book. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have it. I clearly don't read it very often because <laughs> I don't want to spoil myself. It's just got. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of subclasses in it, does it? It's it like has a, a, a handful. A handful. Yeah. A lot of them deal with blood. Um, uh-huh. I, I, I wonder about M- Matt Mercer sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Wait, is one of the packs... Wait, the... Is the dragon pack in there? No. What's that from? Uh, it's probably a homebrew thingy. It was like oh. from Community Beyond, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, Gunslinger is in it, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I think is. so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. I would um, like to be a blood cleric. Was that's blood, wait, that. what? That's a thing, a blood cleric. Yeah, like what's yeah. this thing with blood, man? Like, yo, I'm kind of okay if Sylvie dies now. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well. <laughs> this has been Taldori World in Chaos. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We're gonna go around the table, oh. say our goodbyes plug our shiz, and then uh, call it a night. So let's start with Maddie. Hey, folks, I'm Maddie, aka So Many Games. I play D&D here Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, <clears throat> uh, Saturdays, I do So Chatty, and this month for the rest of June, uh, after So Chatty, we'll have um, uh, a, a big gay one-shot. Um and uh our first one is uh this saturday we're doing a retroverse and we're playing for the trevor project um the following saturday is uh a so random and we're playing for glsen and then the final one on the 29th is dragonlance and we're playing for mermaids uk and uh yeah got a lot of great folks uh gonna be on the show hanging out and then we're gonna play some dnd afterwards and hopefully raise a little money for uh some really great uh lgbtqia organizations that actually all work with youth um which is uh really important to me so yeah awesome that'll be awesome to see and hopefully you all can pop in shoot a donation or at the very least spread the word that's always good yep. too so whatever you can do to help make sure to do that if you can and we might uh, if anybody is uh, interested um in like that knows dragonlance um there's at least one spot left open and uh yeah so hit me up all righty uh let's bounce over to <laughs> robert yo what up i'm robert you can find me on the internet here and other places uh, playing D&D at 
DSC underscore Smurf on other places. It's really hot, and I'm running out of brain. <laughs> uh, so that's that's me. Alrighty, uh, Derek. Hey, I'm Derek. Uh, you can find me here every Wednesday playing some Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I also stream on my own Twitch channel at Delta J Ford. That happens to also be the handle where you can find me on most places, including Twitter, uh, where I push out when I go live. I think I might be changing my streaming schedule a little bit. Maybe just take Wednesdays and Mondays off and stream every other day or you know the rest of the days sometimes i stream with brian and maybe sometimes with riley to play some overwatch or whatever uh i'm playing jrpgs this month so right now i'm playing monster hunter and i want to play with more people i i know i, I want i really want to play maybe we'll do that this saturday night because i have it downloaded again and i just haven't jumped back into it yeah you need to get up to a certain level before you can do a uh, multiplayer so I'm definitely there already. Like I got that okay. far. I just didn't get okay, much cool. further. Yeah, that'd be that'd be fun. Uh, alrighty, uh, Sai. Hi, I'm Sai. I'm here every Wednesday with my lovely colleagues. Um, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, same as the little thing underneath my face. Alrighty, Riley. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm here every Wednesday. You can find me on Twitter. I'm Riley Avery. <laughs> I was gonna say something else. I couldn't tell if you froze or what. What happened? There. I know. <laughs> well, my brain paused, and I went into this like daydream of a blood cleric, like that girl from Hero Academia with the blood syringe. Oh yeah. And making a blood cleric that's like her, but then I was like, mm, she's kind of weird, and that's what my brain went to. You referenced anime, and I understood. You're Derek, welcome. You've changed. Or, yay. <laughs> I don't know why I said you're welcome. <clears throat> I never understand anything you guys are talking about. And finally, just a reminder, this oh. stream is proud to be sponsored by SoNerdware.com. It is what the nerds wear. Make sure to go to SoNerdware.com. Use the discount code SOULBEAR. Get 10% off your geeky gear and look super fly like all of us. Oh, um, there also um, might be some new Soul Bear merch going in the <laughs> shop. I need to talk to Brian and Quinn. I have some stuff to show them. So who knows? We'll see. Okie dokie. Ah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Terry's cat is going mental right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, why do you have a scarf? No, he, he likes necks, and it drives me crazy. Uh, anyway, That's I've been your dungeon though. master. No, it's not. It really isn't. <laughs> Not every single day of your life. Um, it's torture. Uh, uh, I, anyway, I've been your Dungeon Master, Brian Penaloza. You can find me on Twitter, <laughs> at Captain Sugar Bear. That's at CPT Sugar Bear. You can also find me DMing Comedy of Strahd every other Monday at the same time slot, 7 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, or whatever time it is anymore. I don't fucking know. But that'll be this coming up when, uh, Monday, so that's cool. Aside from that, you can find me on Copperheart Podcast. That's at Copperheart Pod. As Sergeant O'Bannon... On Sundays is when those episodes come out. The last episode that I was in, I was actually really proud of myself, so make sure to give it a listen. Uh, that was the last episode that aired on Sunday. Really, really, really good Ooh. show. And I don't just say that because I'm in it. I say that because I have an ear for fucking quality. So, trust me. I guess also pretty soon I'm going to start writing about video games. I don't know. Life's weird. So, you know, that'll be fun. Thinking about doing a piece on Deus Ex. So, if you like Deus Ex, keep your eyes peeled. With that... We're going to go ahead and call it a night. Thank you so much for everybody that hung out, everybody that raided, everybody that stayed after the raids, everybody who, uh, you know, uh, uh, subbed to us, all of it. We just appreciate you being here, chatting with us, hanging out with us, and we will say, see you next week on Tal'Dorei, World in Chaos.